Hey everybody, welcome to the backyard today. We have a touch of springtime in the air. We've had some thunderstorms running around the area. We have the yellow hinge of, or if that's the right word, the yellowish crud that comes from all the pollen this time of year. And trust me, we got it everywhere. What are we going to do for you today out here in the backyard? We're going to do Jeff's version of King Ranch Chicken. Now, King Ranch Chicken, for those of you who don't know, is popular in the South, especially in Texas. And there is probably 50 different variations of King Ranch Chicken. I've seen it done with chicken breast. I've seen it done with noodles. I've seen it done with tortillas. I've seen it done with uh, tortilla chips and all different kinds of variations. So what I did is I looked at a couple other ones and I came up with something that I like. And so I'm going to show you how I do King Ranch Chicken. Now again, most of my videos are how I do things and not necessarily the right way to do things, but I do them my way. So folks, what underneath this towel here, if I don't dump it out, my favorite cut of chicken is a thigh. Now, that's debatable. Everybody's got their favorite cut of chicken, right? I like the thigh. To me, it has the best flavor of anything in the chicken naturally. Now, you can take chicken, spice it up, and make it flavorful. But I think chicken thighs just have their own kind of flavor, especially bone-in thighs. Now, we don't have bone-in thighs today. What we have is some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I'm leaving the fat on these because, to me, that's where the flavor is, folks. Now, if it's excessive, you want to trim it. Now, typically in King Ranch chicken, you boil your chicken, you shred it up, or you chop it up. You do something like that, and that's how you come up with the chicken. Not Jeff. We're going to go on the smoker with this. We're going to put these chicken thighs on here. They're really thin. They're not going to take long to cook because I want some of that smoke flavor in my King Ranch chicken. Now we're going to put them there for a little bit. They're going to have to go for a little bit. We've got a pretty good fire going over there. Let's close this up. And get us some heat moving over there because we can be typically on the smoker side over there. You're 225 or so. Because that's where you want to smoke chicken. We can get on up there around three, three and a quarter. While that's going, we're going to, if I don't burn up my wooden cutting board, we're going to mix up what we're going to be putting in the King Ranch chicken. Typically, in King Ranch chicken, it starts with a can of cream of mushroom soup. going to get that in there and folks it's a beautiful day there's a lot of activity around our area people are enjoying the weather and trust me uh, a few weekends ago we were in Texarkana Texas for a veterans benefit and I thank you for the people that showed up we had a few followers that showed up to come to see us and man that just tickled us to death and we thank you for that but that weekend I say it was a little muddy. I got some friends that said, Jeff, it's more than just a little muddy. It's wet. So, folks, it was. And it was, uh, it made us work. Because the ground was wet and everything. And we had to really work to get it done. But it's a great cause. And we sure don't mind sacrificing a little. This is a cream, a can of cream of chicken. And this is what is typical in 95% of the King Ranch recipes that are out there. In a can of Rotel tomatoes. Now, you can use hot, spicy, mild. You can use whatever you want in King Ranch chicken. In here, we've got a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of black pepper. We got a teaspoon of chili powder. 
and we've got a teaspoon or a little bit more than a teaspoon of cumin okay that didn't want to all come out of there and this is about two cloves of crushed garlic and one diced bell pepper now that is what's in a lot of recipes for king ranch chicken there's some that add onion there's a lot of different things but this is where i'm going to go jeff on you i'm going to do it as i splatter it everywhere because y'all have been watching me enough that y'all know i make a mess when i cook so i take a can of green chilies because i love the flavor of green chilies you can use hatch chilies you can use anything like that that you want to use and folks i can tell you right now this smells like king ranch chicken okay i'm going to get this well stirred up and the last thing that i do to this part that's completely my way is i have a can of creamed corn yeah creamed corn that's it i like the corn flavor that goes in there i like the sweetness of the cream corn as it pairs well or goes well or counters the heat that's in the king ranch chicken you can add a little jalapeno to this you can add a little cayenne pepper you can go a lot of different ways and like i say there's probably there may be more than 50 versions of king ranch chicken everybody's got their own everybody's got their favorite and folks with cooking it's not necessarily about doing the recipe exactly it's more about creating food that you enjoy to eat and if others enjoy to eat it that's fine but if you're cooking in your house and you're cooking in your kitchen for your family cook what you enjoy if you don't like cumin in your dish such as this or you don't like hot chilies or something like that change it put in there what you want to make you happy so folks i'm going to put this in an ice box and let it cool we're going to get our chicken cooked off and we're going to come back and we're going to assemble this so y'all watch a few of these pictures Hey folks, welcome back to Head in the Backyard. We're working on this just version of King Ranch Chicken. And again, like I said earlier, there is many, 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 many options of this dish that's out there. And I will be honest, I am going to do it with tortillas today, but I do like it with some elbow macaroni in there. It, it's just something that's easy to eat. It's a spoonful. You don't end up with a lot of stuff. But that's just a preference. We've got this chicken cooked off on the grill. Or the smoker it's really falling apart some we want to cube this up a little bit not super small mainly some narrow strips like you would cut fajitas maybe okay something along those lines uh it's a little hot on my fingers but some of that stuff we just got to deal with I hope y'all are having a good day. It is a beautiful day here in central Mississippi. We uh getting up into the mid-70s. There's no rain. We have had rain, so we're blessed with that. But uh we are so happy with the day we have here today. We're doing so good. And we hope that y'all are doing the same. And you can get this chopped up as small as you want it. As big as you want it I mean you do what you you think is best like I always said make your recipe your own just because you saw it make it the way the recipe is the first time and if there's things you don't like with it make it the way you want it music I say this a lot and I think I've told y'all this a lot here on the videos but music to me is a lot music food to me is a lot like music there's many genres of music out there country pop rap 
all different kinds. Some of us can tolerate a lot of different types of music, but each one of us has our own, and we prefer that, and I think it's that way with food. You know, uh, each of us have a different taste, and I think that taste is unique to each one of us, and uh, I cook at home differently than I cook out for people. When I cook out for people, I have to be careful not to spice it up too much or uh, get a little carried away in that regard. But uh, you have to be mindful of who's eating your food. So most of these videos that I do are here at home. These are Jeff Way, just Way. So you might need to take them and fix them your way. All right, we kind of got this up where I'm happy with it. Get a little bit of that oil off my fingers. Should have stole that piece and ate it. Now, you can do King Ranch chicken in a baking dish in your oven. I'm outside. We're going to use a Dutch oven. We're going to, that's how we're going to assemble this today. And I'm sorry, folks. I had to wander off. We're going to use the Chuck Wagon Cook's best friend is what I want to call it. Pam. Uh, this dish has cheese and a lot of different stuff in it. And uh, it will stick in your Dutch oven, especially if you don't have good seasoning. This is not one of my favorite Dutch ovens right here, folks. It's an oddball brand. But I do use it for oddball dishes such as we're using today. Now, I said, like I told y'all earlier, I'm going to use tortillas. Now, there's a lot of different ways people do this. People layer the tortillas in there like a lasagna. Some people tear them up. Some people cut them up. There's a lot of different ways. What I prefer to do is take some tortillas. And I just like to kind of pull them into pieces. And I just put them around on the bottom first. And you just don't want a whole bunch of them overlapping. And I try to get it in manageable sizes so when you go to dip it out there, it stays in your spoon. And not the whole thing. You can cut these up into little triangles if that's something you prefer. You can cut them into strips. Like I say, I've used tortilla chips before. And they have a tendency to stay a little crisp or more firm, I guess would be a word. Uh, and go with that. But I'm going to get a fairly decent amount of these down here in the bottom. Just so that we really don't see a bunch of the Dutch oven. And that was two, whatever size these are. There's two tortillas. Then we're going to take some of this chicken that we've chopped up. And we're just going to scatter it around in here. And uh, if your chicken is not 100% done, it'll get done. This has got to bake a little bit. So we want to get a little bit of that scattered around in here. And then uh, a lot of people mix cheese in their mixture. I prefer to scatter my cheese in there. I'm going to scatter this a little. This is a what they call a three cheese blend. You can use a Mexican cheese, you can use cheddar, you can use whatever turns you on on that. And folks, I noticed something in my video the other day. I'm going to check my little microphone, make sure it's good. In my video the other day, a lot of times my apron's crooked. I don't give my wife an opportunity to check the way I get dre I dress. Sometimes my apron is off to one side or the other or something like that. This is the mixture we mixed up earlier. We just kind of want to make a layer in here. I cooked this a fair amount, but I'll be honest with you. The mixture in, that's in here, I always usually have it about the same. But I don't know that I've ever made this dish 100% the same. I've used different cheese. I've used a tortilla or a noodle. I've used something different. So uh, 
I play with it quite a bit. I've even had this one time. A lady cooked this for us. And uh, actually used a big, like a one-inch cubed crouton is what they used in there. And I thought that was kind of odd. But you know what? It actually tasted pretty good. All right. So let's get another layer of torn up tortillas in there. And again, whatever size makes you happy. We kind of like doing these videos. We've got some positive feedback. We do get some negative feedback every once in a while. We'll get out there in left field, but uh, most, I would say 90% of our comments are positive. And uh, like I say, we have been lucky to actually meet a couple of our followers at some events that we've been to. And that was uh, it's really nice when someone walks up that you never met before, recognizes who you are. Uh, just it's really, it just makes you feel good. All right, now we're going to do this. Let's get us another layer of this meat in there. I'm going to be a little heavier on this meat on this layer. I might have shorted the other one a little bit. And I tried to use about half and half. Put the rest of this mixture in there. And uh, my wife's not here today, so uh, without me going and getting the camera, we don't zoom in. Uh, it's a little harder on me to do that that way, but hey, we're going to get by, we're going to get it to you one way or the other. Just like when you're cooking outside, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's dusty, windy, and uh, or raining. You do the best you can. Get this moved around out here. Now, you can put some tortillas on top of this for cosmetic reasons or if you want it to look pretty if you want. Uh, or however you want to do it. I'm going to sprinkle a little cheese on top of this. And again, folks, cheese is however much makes you happy to me there's cheese bacon and butter those are the three things that make everything good there you go folks i'm gonna disappear and get my lid we're gonna get this cooked up for y'all i'm gonna come back in here and we're gonna plate it up and show you what we got hey folks welcome back out here again we got our King Ranch chicken, just version, cooked off in this Dutch oven over here. And uh, we're going to plate it up a little bit for you and see what we got. I'm going to go set this over here. Hey, bring me a big hot pot holder, folks, and I'm very, very sorry for that. Folks, this is good. This went about 30 minutes on the smoker or on the pit, fire, coals on it, however you want to call it. Here we go. Let's get in here and let y'all take a look at this. I'm going to attempt to do this by myself. Here we go. I'll come in here and take a look. Emmett wants to say hi. And folks, I wish y'all could smell this. I really do. Because it's just going to be good right here. Now folks, this is screaming hot. I can tell you it's screaming hot. I know it's going to be hot. So, uh, a lot of that is classic King Ranch chicken flavor, except when you get to the meat, you can see my cheese is hanging on, the meat such as this right here, it's 
Oh yeah. The smoke flavor comes through. I think that's really good. And I really, really like it. Uh, I'm not going to say this is a favorite of mine, but it's something that's easy to cook when I'm out. And uh, people really, really enjoy it. When you first put it in here, I can add a little thing to my video. When you first put it in here, you're going to think it's a little dry. As the heat goes in there and cooks, it gets moist and it starts running around in there. And you get a lot more liquid than you think you're going to have when you first assemble it. So don't panic when you put it in there and add a bunch of stuff to it because you need it. It'll get very, very soupy. You can see how it ran on this plate the way it is. So this is great. Now, I did the tortillas in this. The reason I like noodles are the, uh, I don't know, the little pasta that's all spirally looking. I'm not Italian, so I don't know that name. Because all this cheese stuff kind of clings to all that. And when you take a spoon, especially a big boy spoon, and you dip in there and you get your spoonful of that, that's good. That's good. And ain't nothing better. So, folks, as we end this day, we end every video we got with the same thing. If I get Emmett to say it, he ought to. Enjoy your food.